it's been a good long time since I've done an allotment garden video. And that's because if you've been watching the last few videos, I have a new house and we've been spending all of our time redecorating it, revamping it, moving, and also doing a little bit of work in the new garden. So I cleaned out the greenhouse and I have a few potted plants established. There is a lot more work that will need to happen, especially over the winter. Got plenty of plans, so stay tuned for developments with the home garden. Now, as far as the allotment garden is concerned, it's been a little bit neglected. So over the past, I don't know, four or six weeks, I've not been up here very often. And I was really, really worried about the state of it. I'd nip up here from time to time to pick a few things and have a, a look to see how things were coming on, but the last couple of weeks were especially busy. So today I'm going to have a little bit of a walk through the garden, show you what it looks like right now. I do have to admit I've done a couple of hours of work already, but to be honest, when I got here and started doing that work, it wasn't that bad. And I attribute that to starting to use the no-dig gardening method this year. So I've been mulching like crazy. I have mulched paths around all my beds and that has really been super helpful in keeping a lot of the weeds down. Saying that, there's still plenty of weeds. So I'm going to show you all that's growing in the garden, weeds and all. And then also I brought my basket with me. So I'm going to collect a few things to whip up into supper. So let's go have a look at the garden. This is the prettiest little part of my garden right now. And it's where I have a lot of different herbs planted from down here on the end, I have some thyme, lemon balm. There's lots and lots of calendula flowers that I need to get picking. I'm not gonna have to worry about reseeding this bed either because you can see all of the seed heads over the past month of the, yeah, a lot of them have matured. So this is going to be one big calendula patch next year. There's lots of chamomile here. And then I also have some culinary herbs, so rosemary, sage, chives. Next door, there isn't a whole lot growing here anymore. I've pulled a lot of weeds out, but there's lots of rainbow chard left. And if you just lightly cook this, it will retain the color. If it's overly cooked, the, the color will just drain out or just turn out like a murky color. So very lightly stir frying is what I find is the best way to keep that lovely red and pink and yellow. Chard is fantastic as well because it doesn't really tend to bolt as easily as spinach. And spinach for me is always a little bit problematic because at the first sign of warm weather, it just goes to, uh, goes to seed. Saying that, chard can go to seed too, as you can see here. Today's pickings of raspberries. I grow two different varieties, a red one and the autumn gold yellow one. And they have been fruiting for the past six weeks or so. I think that I've picked pretty much every berry that is ripe off. Oh no, I've missed, missed one here. There we go. There's always one or two hiding behind leaves. The wildlife area is looking really pretty these days. The cosmos are blooming, magenta. We also have lavender still blooming. You can see this down here. This is a new variety that I planted this year. And then over here, this is a sedum. And this time of the year, it will be covered and insects. It is a pollinator plant, one of the few that you can really rely on to feed bees and other garden insects in early autumn, late summertime. And then at the top of the patch is my red love 
apple tree and it has produced so many apples this year. Genuinely one of the sweetest apples that I've ever tasted. I got this tree from a UK company called Lubera. It might actually not be UK, European. And it's red on the inside and out. So let me have a bite. Isn't that gorgeous? It tastes amazing too. Mm. The beds that are probably the most weedy are my strawberry bed. And it's not necessarily weeds inside, but it's all the runners here. <laughs> Look at them all. I've got to come up here and trim all of these back. And then the plan is I'm going to remove the two rows of strawberries here in the center and replant them. And potentially I'll replant them with plants from the runners of these Mara de Bois strawberries. So they're putting them out about now too. Now, I've done a couple of videos that have featured the Mara de Bois and they're a day neutral type of strawberry and that means that they fruit twice a year. And you can see there's flowers all over them again and the occasional fruit. And the fruit are actually much larger than they were earlier in the year. And I just find this amazing. Usually I've always had June bearing strawberries or the Alpine ones, the little tiny ones that are ripe throughout the year. But this is fantastic being able to know that I'll get a second crop of big juicy red strawberries every year. In my little brassica bed I have purple sprouting broccoli, kale, and then at the very end purple brussels sprouts my first year growing them and they are just starting to form those little rosettes along the stem. I'm really excited to try these later on in the winter. <laughs> there are some absolutely massive cucumbers on my cucumber palette trellis. Look at that. There's, there are even bigger ones down underneath. Holy moly. Wow. If you have a recipe for gigantic cucumbers, please let me know because otherwise I'm not really sure what to do with these. I imagine though, when I cut them open, it's gonna be a lot of seeds in the center, larger, probably tougher seeds, but we'll, we'll have a look and see. This area along the side of my garden, I keep kind of wild. I have perennial berry bushes in here and lots of different types of flowers. The blueberries are still fruiting and because they're hidden in here with so many other different plants, the birds haven't found them yet. Delicious. Mm. I think my plan for this area is to keep it pretty much the same, but I want to start growing a lot more kind of wind blocking type plants. So this area will probably have a lot more tall plants come next year. Also, because I do have the new garden at home, I'm going to be moving a lot of the plants or veg that I grow up here to the back garden because it's just gonna be so much easier to harvest. And so next year, I think the allotment garden is mainly going to be things like onions, carrots, um, potatoes, things like that. Let's see if we can get some carrots for tea, for dinner rather. I pick up quite a few different British ways of saying things from my boyfriend and friends and tea is actually what a lot of people call dinner or supper. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to get a fork. Lovely. That'll be fantastic roasted tonight. Let's dig up a couple more. Now 
Now, I, I did notice this the last time too. A lot of my carrots have split and some of them quite dramatically. That's still salvageable, but what's happened is that it was really, really dry this summer and then it got really, really wet. We're back to Isle of Man standard weather and that caused the carrots to split. I've just dug this one up and you can see just how deeply it split all the way to the core and there's actually slugs inside of it. The other side seems like it's growing and fine. But I, I did dig up some that were rotting completely. They were so damaged. Who's this? Hi! <laughs> How are you? This is another plot holder's dog. And he was coming over a lot in the summertime drinking from the pond. Hello. Three big carrots for dinner. And we have a white one, a traditional orange one, and then a yellowy one. And those will look really pretty, the colors together all roasted up. This year I planted my lavender bushes from the old house all along here. So even back then, early in the year, I was already thinking about what if we move this year? I don't want to lose my lavender. They transplanted really well and you can see there's lots of flowers all over them. The bees have absolutely loved these. They are a bit woody down below and that's just because of the soil acidity. They prefer th a soil a little bit more alkaline so what I've done is planted these little sunflowers here to, to try to disguise the woodiness. Oh look, there's a bee on this one. In June, I think it was, I covered this area with some landscaping fabric and wood chips just to keep the weeds down. I, I didn't really have very much time this year to work on this patch. And then I've just planted some squash and pumpkins through the mesh. It was a bit late for them, but I have had quite a few squash and pumpkins off of it already. This is a type called Uchikikuri. And then I do have a blue banana. I took the plant out. It was starting to actually die back. I wonder if it has anything to do with the mushrooms that were surrounding it. Those mushrooms will have popped up from spores colonizing the wood chips and I've seen them in a few places around my plots. So it does make me wonder. It was quite bad up here, but I did get one really good squash off of this plant and then another one from a plant further down. All in all, I've got some really good pickings for dinner tonight and also for dessert. So we have the raspberries. I've got some chard the carrots of course, calendula flowers. I'm actually going to go back and pick some more of the red love apples as well. They are just so delicious right now and they're perfect for picking and making into pies and red applesauce. Imagine that. So it's actually not looking shabby is it? The garden. It's funny how the garden will just get on without us despite not being tended that well for a good few weeks in the middle of the summer but it's looking great um, I feel a little bit on top of things I was a bit stressed out probably about a week two ago just so much work at the new house and there's going to be a lot of work in the home garden as well I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that here on YouTube because I do have my two growing spaces now so I might combine them into videos or I might actually alternate and do something at home some weeks and then up here at the allotment garden in other weeks. We'll figure it out. Let me know what you think though. What do you like about my channel? What things would you like to see more of? And I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week here on the Lovely Greens YouTube channel.